Audio normalization. What is it and should you normalize your tracks? We're gonna discuss that in today's video and if you wanna know the answers to those questions, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sourcer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash the like button. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So in today's video, we are talking about what is audio normalization and should you normalize your tracks? And the answer to that question is absolutely yes. And I'm gonna show you in this video how I normalize my tracks and then tell you why I do it. And I'm gonna tell you that later in the video. So make sure you stick around for that. But before we get to that, let's first start off with talking about what audio normalization actually is. All right, so I'm actually on the audiosourcer.com website here. And if you guys don't know this, I actually have a blog and um, it's kind of growing. I'm adding a lot of content to it when I can between YouTube and actually, you know, my mixing and mastering services. I have quite a busy schedule. However, uh, I do have something related to what we're talking to in the video here. So we're going to go up to the blog section here and uh, we're going to go to right here. What is audio normalization? So let's actually click on this here. And uh, I'm going to bring you right down to our two different types here, peak normalization and loudness normalization. So we're not going to talk about loudness normalization in this video because what that is, that's actually related to like things happening out in the streaming world and other instances too. But the most common scenario we think about in today's industry is the streaming world. That's when we like look at Spotify and say, hey, well, I mastered a song. It will say negative eight LUFS. In Spotify's standard is negative 14. So they're actually going to knock down my song 60 dBs. And the reason they do that is that, you know, a lot of people listen to Playlist. And that, of course, has, you know, songs from a bunch of different artists mastered by, you know, several different mastering engineers. So, you know, there's a lot of different standards out there. So their idea is that they want that, you know, to be the most even across the board when you're actually listening to music so you don't have to turn up and down your phone or whatever you're listening to it on, okay? So that's the idea of a loudness normalization. But that's not what we're talking about in this video, okay? We're actually talking about peak normalization, okay? So peak normalization looks at the highest level of a signal present in a recording and uses it as a reference point. So for example, the loudest part in the song is negative six decibels, then everything will be brought up by 60 dBs. Now that's assuming that you set a target level of zero, which a lot of people think that, you know, audio normalization is bringing, you know, the peak level up to zero on a particular track, but it doesn't have to be. It could be set at whatever you want it to be. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this video, okay? So if you've ever messed with normalization, you may not really known how to use it. And you may have always set it to zero, which I don't recommend that. And you're gonna see how and why I set it the way I do here in a second. So I do wanna mention that if you guys are interested in the articles you see in this blog and want to get them sent to your email, you can subscribe to the blog here. Uh, all you have to do is basically go up here and you can sign up for the blog. And you can also sign up to that form you saw on the homepage, which also gets you 20% off to any of the services that I offer on my website, okay? So with that being said, let's actually look at how I normalize my audio tracks and I will tell you why. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools and I have a session opened by an artist named Isaiah Reyes and the song is called Journey to the Unknown. So I'm actually currently mixing an album for him and I need to get this particular session prepared. So the first thing I do in sessions is of course I organize the tracks, get them color coded, but after that I actually go in and normalize the tracks. So the first thing we wanna do here is actually look and see what the actual peak level of a particular track is, for example. So we'll go to the drummer's mix track here. We'll highlight it. We'll go to audio suite. We'll go down to other, and then we'll go down to gain. So I have two in here, it's the second one. Uh, it should look like this. This is the default Pro Tools gain audio suite plugin here. 
So while the track is highlighted up here, all you have to do is hit Analyze, and it will show the level. So zero dBs here is not what we want. So my target level is negative six dBs, and I will tell you why that's the case here in a second, but let me tell you the first way you can go about actually getting to negative six dBs. So the first way we can go about doing this is actually just clip gaining this. So we know that we have to go down negative six because we're at zero to get to my target goal. So we can just turn this down negative six dBs. So now we are at my target goal. However, that process takes a while if you have a lot of tracks. You have to actually highlight each track, open up the gain plugin, analyze it, and then turn down all the clip gains accordingly. So we don't wanna do that. So the best way to go about doing it is to actually go to the audio suite here, go to other, go down to the normalize plugin, set your actual target level here. So our target level is negative six, highlight it, and then hit render. And that's gonna get it to where you want it, okay? And you wanna make sure you have peak selected here. So look how fast I can do these here. Just highlight it like that. Keep down down the chain here. So we want to be, you know, fast in the studio because obviously time is money. So let me get back to why negative six is my target level. Well, you know, Chris Lord Algae actually made a good point in one of his videos because if you ever watch some of his videos he does for Waves and, you know, some other plug-in manufacturers, he gives away some of his secrets without maybe not knowing it. And he mentioned in one video that, you know, plugins react at certain levels. And he kind of threw out a couple levels in the video. And I found that negative 6 dBs tends to work really well, okay? So if you think about analog hardware, you can hit analog hardware pretty hard. You know, you can hit your VU meters, you know, past zero, and you get some nice analog saturation. And your plugins that do analog emulation kind of work the same way, all right? So we want to make sure that we're actually sending quite a bit of level into those plugins, okay? So if you're barely registering into your analog plugins, um, you know, barely sending any level into your very first plugin, that's not good because you're not getting all the benefits that the plugin has to offer, okay? So for example, I use the Slate Virtual Tape Machine as my first plugin on every track. And if you read the user manual, which you should always do, it tells you that the best level to hit on that is zero on the VU meter, okay? So that should be your goal when using that plugin. But all you need to know, the reason I normalize my tracks to negative six, it's really all based around how analog plugins react and that we want to make sure we are sending a good amount of level in. All right, so now you guys should have a good idea of what audio normalization is, how you should use it, and of course, why you should use it. So as you guys know now, we want to get optimal level into our plugins, and often we don't record at very hot levels because we don't have to in the digital world. So using audio normalization allows us to get our levels up to a optimal level, okay? So I hope you guys end up liking this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe so I'm making this content for you, and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. And if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely check out my video I mentioned earlier about proper gain staging. And with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.